feel of uh, playing at Tomorrowland? What did you know before about this park? It sounds massive. I mean, when we pulled up in the car, the bass was, the bass felt like you were being punched, you know. It sounds amazing. I'm really looking forward to it, actually. Do you play to other festivals this year? I did one in Poland last week. Unfortunately, How was that? Well, it was a beach party and it rained. And oh, there were like um, thunder and lightning. You know, it was proper wet. So it was okay. But I did um, something in Australia. My most uh, memorable gig experience was when I played this um, place in the Philippines called Boracay Island. Have you heard of that? No, I never. It's, um, it's, it's in the Philippines and it's this tiny little island. And what, to get there, you have to like um, you fly on a plane, and then you have to go in this old boat which is made of wood, and then you have to wade through the water, you know, to the island. And I played there for Slinky a few years ago. Oh, excellent! And that was, you know, it was like I played. The, the sun was coming up. And it was, I've always been very aware of the influences in my music. You know, I've always been really aware of the, the artists and lots of life experiences that have influenced me. So I decided to kind of like wear my wear my influences on my sleeve and w w when I record a particular track I actually say you know this track was inspired by you know David yeah. Bowie or by Kraftwerk okay. or whatever that kind of thing so um, but the other thing about the album was I wanted to create an album that was kind of like a a sort of like a, a, a film soundtrack. Oh right. You know where this is the feeling that you get actually. The feeling, yeah, that's right, because it's like it's multi-genre and it's a real sort of like widescreen thing, real really sort of cinematic. And I wanted to a lot of my favourite albums. They seem to have this really wonderful um, the way they move from like a male vocal track to an instrumental to a female vocal to an instrumental. And I kind of like planned it all out before I started, and then I. Um, I also wanted the album to be segued together so that it was just like a listening experience from start to end and not like a it's a dance music album but it's it's sort of it's I more, don't think that it's just only it's, a dance music no, album it's an electronic music record but it's it's the kind of thing you can listen to in the car you know, or I wanted to make a record that was something that you would listen to from start to end, you know, and enjoy every track without feeling that any tracks were like just put there to fill the album. You know, I'm really, really proud of the album. You know, I think it's a, it's something for everybody. I think with an album, you know, making an album is very, very diff um, different to making singles. You know, it's like. If you've got a concept and you make a plan before you start, and you can visualize the album, it makes it much more enjoyable. If you're just trying to like do a load of tracks and stick them together in one in one re run release, you tend to end up with something that sounds well. It sounds like you've stuck a load of tracks together, but if you've actually got a really strong sort of concept, you know you actually know what the end result is going to hopefully going to sound like when you start, then it makes it a more sort of enjoyable process. Do you know what I mean? It's yes. kind of like uh, with Rain Stars Eternal, that was my first artist album, and it was a real, real sort of learning experience, you know. With Touchstone, I just felt really sort of happy and fulfilled with it all the way through the the whole thing from start to end. So yeah, it was, it was a, it was, a, it was a difficult album, but. Uh, very enjoyable. The vocalists, did you uh, think a lot about them? I was very lucky actually with a couple of them. I mean, there's Julie Scott, of course, who I've worked with before. I mean, she's got such an amazing voice. She's like, she's one of the, she's, um, she's a vocal coach, you know, so she's got an amazing control of her voice. I love to work with singers where I don't need to tune tune the vocals in, you know. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of vocalists, you have to tune the vocals in. Whereas all the, all the, all the artists I work with, apart from myself, <laughs> I didn't have to do any tuning but Julie Scott's incredible she sings on um, Night Signals and uh, Twisted Wing and then there was Lucia Home from Sunscream I mean that was a proper result yeah you know, I've always been a massive Sunscream fan and um, when I released Rain Stars Eternal she sent me a, a um, she phoned me up to say how much she loved The Last Defeat I you know I answered the phone I was like she's like it's Lucia Home from Sunscream I was going what <laughs> couldn't believe it you know and then she offered she said that The Last Defeat uh, she was really inspired by the music huh? and she wanted to write a song for it so I was totally you know oh, blown wow. away yeah, it was amazing so that became Last Defeat Part 2 and then you've got this um, guy called Bill McGruddy who's a guy that I worked with um, about 12 years ago on Z2 music do you remember Z2 I Want You I don't know if anyone remembers that yes we all remember this he's a vocalist on that and he's also a really brilliant musician and a really brilliant string arranger. Okay. So I wanted somebody to help me arrange strings and stuff for the album, so I got him in. And he's got an amazing voice as well. He used to be in a, a Doors tribute band called the Manzarek Doors. Yes. And uh, he's a really lovely guy and a wonderful musician in the studio. And he also plays guitar as well. 
So um, yeah, that was really cool. And then of course I did vocals myself on a couple of tracks. Uh, how do you feel when you record vocals? My own vocals? Yes, your own vocals. It's really weird, you know, it's um, it's a strange thing. I've always like sung, you know, but it was only when I recorded um, You Write the Rules in, was it 2000 and 2003, I think, yeah. I actually became comfortable with my own voice. Yeah. And then when I did Lates in the Fields. Uh, how do you feel that many labels are releasing stuff and they have all brand new 2010 versions? Sometimes I feel that going backwards and just releasing new mixes of old tracks is kind of like, unless you can significantly improve upon the original, it doesn't seem much point. Having said that, you know, I do quite often commission new mixes of my own material to play in my sets, but that's because I get bored of playing the same ones. Exactly. You know, like for example, Destination off the, you know, it was on the Tiesto Niana album, yeah. Solar Stone Destination. Like, I really wanted to play that out, but I was so bored of the original track, because I did it, you know, nine years ago, that I got, um, what's his name, uh, Mike's and Jules to do a new mix. Yeah. I'm going to play it tonight, actually. Oh, sorry, sorry, excellent. And it's not, it just keeps it more interesting, you know, for you as a DJ. My favorite tracks from the album, can we pick some favorites? And well, it changes every day, it changes every day, you see. I mean, like yesterday, my favorite track was um, Night Signal because I, you know, because I was in the mood for some like French porn <laughs> and it's got this little bit in it where she sings in this really like la la la, la, la. Okay. and there's this guitar and it sounds like a sort of soundtrack of a French porn film. <laughs> Ultraviolet is one of my favorite tracks on the album. Playing with Harris in um, Nicosia I think it was and we spent a few hours in his studio and we came up with this nice sort of melody. I mean Electric Love was my favorite track but I've like I've listened to that so many times. Yeah it is so beautiful track from the moment that I got it and also the remix package was Awesome. I'm glad you liked it. I love the um, the Royal Sapien drum and bass mix. I mean, I just thought that was incredible. You know, and the bottom mix as well. I love that. Uh, I played the Elf song mix in um, Poland last week. That's, that was good as well. But I think I've heard that track too much. And which track is going to be the next single from the album? The next one is a title track, Touchstone. Yeah. I've got lo I've got remixes from um, Ali and Fila, uh, Forerunners, Orchidia, Estiva. Many of the no. artists? No, no, it's always really mad when you meet them. It's like you and me, we've just met and we've been talking on the internet for about five years. Yeah, exactly. You just don't meet because the electronic dance music is like a. It's all on the internet, isn't it? All on the internet. I loved but they never look like you think they're going to look. You know, you always think they're going to be really tall and handsome. <laughs> One of the guys from Dynamic Sense, Nick, I met him again for the first time in five years at, um, at the Matrix on Saturday. Okay. But yeah, you, don't, you never get to meet most of them. I, I never met um, Lucia Holm. Mm -hmm. She recorded the vocal in her studio and then sent it over. Really? Never met her. I'd love to meet her. Though. I'd probably just fall at her feet and kiss her feet. Well, you know, I recorded most of Touchstone in the house where I live now, which is a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere in Wales. And um, oh god, I left Birmingham years ago. Oh, I couldn't. I couldn't stand it there. It was just so so built up. You know, I, I love tranquility. You know, peace and quiet, and yeah. out of the window of my studio. I remember at Christmas when I was just finishing the album, we had this beautiful snow for, and I was looking out the window and I was working on ultraviolet at the time oh, and there was this beautiful you. blanket of snow everywhere i think that's probably what i remember from recording touchstone is the snow at christmas in 2009 the next project is um, electronic architecture 2 so it's, it's like the second installment so i'm kind of like going through new demos by new artists trying to find some really amazing stuff you know so i think that's going to be coming out in may may or june 2011 i think it is now my god that sounds next like... next year yeah, yeah yeah next year oh that means that you have a whole year in front of you well i'm working on the touchstone deluxe oh tell us what is, is all about touchstone deluxe it's going to be a, a sort of a new version of touchstone with two discs it'll have the original album and then there'll be an album of uh, some new mixes of some of the tracks and the videos and stuff Oh, excellent. So yeah. it's going to be a big, big uh, project. Yeah, I think it's January, February next year. I love doing the radio show. The radio show is basically it's the way that I find new music, you know, and I love 
presenting the show and like talking to the listeners and you know playing new music for them and finding unusual music like you know it's not the kind of thing I usually play and all that kind of stuff and all the wonderful progressive because I don't get to play that much progressive house in my DJ sets because I normally play at sort of trance events so it's a way to just like discover brilliant new music and share it with people I suppose. This is what many people said is that the radio show is not trance anymore. Well it is in the, the, the last... The many last people more well, the last half an hour is, but I kind of like I want to I want to give people a bit of everything: progressive house, progressive trance, and trance. You know, it's uh, I mean, there's loads of trance shows out there, and I want people to hear a cross section of music because I love all kinds of electronic music. So I, why should my radio show just be all trance? And also, Ritz, you are very recognized because you have done the first label that is administered from uh, the people themselves. Solar Swarm Solar Recordings. Solar yeah, it's Tell amazing. How yeah. this idea came about? And do you have many members that they vote for the cover, that they vote for the remixes? That's right, yeah. There's, um, there's about, seven, about 70 members, I think, at the moment. And uh, it's really cool because I kind of like... The, the social network thing is very important in our industry. You know, it's the way people communicate. And um, there's so many people involved in, in the community who are very talented, you know, they're, they're producers, artists, mm -hmm. designers and stuff, and I figured there's a lot of wasted talent out there, why not bring them all together and they can all contribute to a label. It's going really well, I mean, we've got like, we've had two releases so far, we've got three unsigned tracks, uh, unreleased tracks, there's uh, new mixes of uh, Vapor Trails by Alexander Popov, that's the next one. Um, it's really exciting, you know, just everyone's so enthusiastic about it. The top 100 uh, list, uh, do you think that this is important then? Uh, it's kind of important, but it's only important in the sense that when promoters are putting on events, they are, they, if they're only booking top 50 DJs, then it, unless you're not in the top do 50. They still, do they still oh yeah, yeah. It is, but it is important in that respect, but I don't really pay much attention to it yet. Do you feel more as a DJ or as a producer? What do you like most to be identified from the two identities? Uh, the identity of the to producer? be honest, when I'm, when I'm in the studio, I'm a producer. When I'm in a club, I'm a DJ. Okay, you can be both. Huh? Yeah, exactly. I can be a lover and a fighter. Do you want to send a message to our viewers? I just say, you know, thanks for believing in the music and keep buying music.